In the 20th century, Indochina entered a period of severe political turbulence. Amid endless wars, dictatorships, hunger and misery, governments could not care less about white life. Agent Orange destroyed entire forests, bombs soared in the skies day and night, and intensive logging and hunting decimated the unique Southeast Asian fauna, including the Indochinese tiger and the elephant. However, in this period, there was a big mammal that disappeared from the face of the earth. Today, we will talk about Cambodia's national animal, the cupre, a large wild cattle thought to be possibly extinct. Big game hunting was a thing back then, and cupres were part of that. The wild oxen were first mentioned in the West by late 1800 French books that often describe a black or blackish gray ox found in open savanna forests. In July 9, 1871, the French Ministry of Navy gave to the Paris Museum of Natural History two Cambodian oxen. The first male died on November 15th, and the second was stacked to the mice and donated to the Natural History Museum of Bourges in 1931, where it resides to this day. A paper from 2006 found that the second bull was very likely a domestic form of cupre, or it could have been a hybrid between the grey ox and domestic cattle. The true story begins in 1935, when the creator of the Vincennes Zoo, Achille Urbain, first heard of the Cupre during a conference in Paris. A year later, he began exchanging letters with the French veterinarian in Cambodia, Dr. René Sauvel. In 1937, Urbain arrived in Cambodia, and Sauvel gifted him three things. A Cupre head, which unfortunately, the taxidermist A.V. Pietri later covered with the skin of a domestic ox, a beautiful seven-year-old bull, Cupri, he had hunted a day before, and lastly, a live three and a half year old specimen that he and Cambodian agents had captured in July of 1936 in Chap Village, northern Cambodia. This young bull and a three and a half year old gaur were sent to the Vincennes Zoo, where they arrived in April of 1937. This precious footage was posted on YouTube channel Archivio Luce Chinichita and shows the arrival of the two animals in Paris. The gaur being the darker color, and the cupre being the lighter one. On June 8, 1937, Western science finally heard of the new wild cattle, as Professor Rubin published his work entitled The Cupre or Grey Ox of Cambodia, where he described the animal as Bos Sauvel, in honor of the Dr. Sauvel. The bull died in 1940, at around 5 to 6 years old. At this time, Europe was facing World War II, and the cupre, along with all animals in the zoo, were probably victims of the war. The cupre discovery caused surprise, but also doubts regarding its status as a new species or a hybrid between zebu and benting. The seventh expedition to Indochina was organized by Jean de la Cour and Mr. François Edmond Blanc in 1938 and 1939. On March 16, 1939, Edmond Blanc and the professional hunter and taxidermist A.V. Pietri shot a note bull in Zamrong, eastern Cambodia. The animal was of enormous importance, as its parts were sent to the USA, where Harold Jefferson Cooley Jr. wrote the first complete anatomical study of an adult, reclassifying it now as Novibus Sauved, of which it later returned to genus Bos. If the gar is regarded as the king of wild cattle, then surely the cupre is the queen. The discovery of the new wild cattle caught the attention of the Coolidge Foundation in America. In 1951, despite the ongoing war in Cambodia, Charles Wharton of the Cornell University went to the northern part of the country in the Priya Vihar and Siem Reap provinces with a massive staff of 90 men, of which 60 were from the Cambodian Royal Army. His goal was simple, to produce an ecological survey of the region's wild cattle. In the documentary entitled The Wild Cattle of Cambodia, Wharton filmed many animals, including all four species of wild cattle. The wild water buffalo, critically in danger of extinction in Southeast Asia today, the gaur, the benting, and lastly, the cupre. He filmed around six different herds of cupre, and despite being an elusive animal, he managed to get clear shots of females, calves, 
and mature bulls. Wharton also found a dead bull during the trip and brought its skeleton to the Harvard Museum of Comparative Zoology. Of the few existing knowledge of the grey ox, most comes from Wharton's film, which is, to this day, the only known footage of the species in the wild. The documentary has been posted here on the channel, but I'll put the link in the description below. Wharton also noticed that the Kupri was in decline and returned to Cambodia in 1964 to attempt capturing some animals for a conservation program. He failed as three animals escaped and two died during the process. After that, the animal nearly disappeared from the eyes of Western science. It has always been hard to study cuprays, and consequently, we know very few things about them. Since Sauvel and Urban, the cuprae range comprised South Laos, South Thailand, Southeast Vietnam, and North, East, and Central Cambodia. The species could often be seen in open forests with pools and south licks and mixed herds of females with calves and young males or adult bulls alone. Males are very easy to distinguish from other wild cattle because of the grey to black coat, the big dewlap in the neck used for thermal regulation, and the frayed horns, which get this characteristic through age as males rub them in the ground or in termite nests. Bulls can measure up to 190 cm in the shoulder and weigh up to 900 kg. Females are greyish brown and possess unique lyric shaped horns, and just like the bulls, they have white socks on their legs and arms. Since its discovery, most sources noted that the cuprae was not a common animal. Wharton suggested around 800 animals in the wild, while Bantang number 5,000. According to the IUCN, the species have probably never exceeded 2,000 individuals recently. Their decline can be associated with a series of events in the region that not only decimate wild cattle, but others like javan rhinos and tigers. Cuprays were affected by the bombings, the landmines, and the presence of soldiers and guerrilla fighters in the woods during the wars of Indochina. Meanwhile, hunger and misery hit the countryside, forcing people to obtain bush meat, especially from wild cattle, known as easy targets. Trophies and hides would also provide a good amount of money for the local hunters. In 1968, Pierre Feffer, a naturalist and ex-chief of the Paris Museum of Natural History, went to Cambodia during the Civil War. He managed to take the last known photo of the species, a female at the Phnom Penh Wildlife Sanctuary in eastern Cambodia. Sightings became scarce in the 70s and 80s. In 1982, three Thai rangers saw three cuprae coming from the Cambodian border. However, one of them stepped onto a landmine and the crew had to return. On June 30, 1988, new scientists published news that Vietnamese scientists saw a few cuprae near the Cambodian border, probably in the late 1987 or early 1988, but were not able to photograph them because it was too dark. In the same year, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam and Thailand signed a treaty to protect the cuprae, however, it seems like it was too late. Local rangers often saw cuprae and other wild oxen when illegal loggers left an area, but that was not the case anymore. According to a 1999 study, apart from a few unconfirmed sightings of animals crossing to Thailand, no rangers or hunters reported seeing cuprae anymore in Cambodia, despite the few sightings of gaur, banting, and water buffalo. Today, the IUCN assesses the cuprae as critically endangered, possibly extinct. In the most optimistic scenario, no more than 50 of them are left, likely in northern or northeast of Cambodia. Several camera trap surveys have been undertaken in Cambodia, but sadly, no cuprae was ever caught. We can suggest that the species sadly disappeared in the 1990s, as it was not able to handle the tough condition imposed by no Chinese wars. Unlike the dodo or the Tasmanian tiger, the cuprae is far from being a famous and charismatic extinct animal. Despite that, a few monuments of the species exist, such as in Cambodia's Modukiri province and Thailand's Theoban National Park. The cuprae also appears in a few collection items, like commemorative coins, cards, and even a medal in honor of a Chili Urban. The World Wildlife Fund, in particular, made postal stamps, first day covers, and coins of the cuprae in the 1980s. A Cambodian military brigade and wildlife rangers in the country used patches in their uniforms depicting cuprae. Recently, a few trophies have been sold to private collectors. This one in particular came from a colossal bull hunted in Cambodia 
in 1949 by Henri Juan and was sold for almost 20,000 euros in 2019. This one is from a bull shot in 1933 and was sold in an auction in 2007. On a Facebook page called Bolsoved, you can find this photo of a Coupre bull. The coat, the huge dewlap and the horns, they all suggest it's a photo in fact of a Coupre, but from when and from where? Uh, could this be the species last known photo? I really don't know, but if you have any information about it, please leave it in the comments. That was one of the stories of the world's rarest wild cattle. Is the Coupre still alive? Uh, let me know in the comments uh, your, your thoughts and I hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time.